Unmanned Underwater Vehicles, Control and Autonomy, Part 1 Unmanned Underwater Vehicles, UV, are all systems that are able to operate below the water surface without having any personnel on board. In principle, such vehicles can also operate on the water surface and may also have personnel on board, but the primary purpose is to operate in a submerged state without a vehicle operator on board. A primary distinguishing feature is the method of control, since this has a significant influence on the degree of autonomy, the range, and the driving profile. When controlling these systems, a distinction is made between two different methods, remote control partial automation and automatic control, whereby autonomy must also be mentioned as an enhancement to automatic control. Remote control. The UUV is operated by remote control where the control of the system and the decision on the use or release of agents of the system is directly exercised by a human being according to the principle of man in the loop. Classic representatives are remotely operated vehicles, ROV, which are usually connected to a control vehicle or a land station by means of a cable like an umbilical cord. The cable supplies the vehicle with power, control commands and also relays camera images and sensor data from the vehicle back to the operator. The sizes of the different systems vary widely, from mini versus to dredge systems with a weight of 20 tons. Due to direct data transmission, they are ideally suited for activities in the vicinity of an object, as they can be precisely controlled and navigated via camera images and sonar data. Their advantages are the almost arbitrary size and payload capacity the direct control as well as the real-time data exchange and the basically unlimited operation time due to the umbilical cord. The disadvantages are a limitation of range and maneuverability due to the umbilical connection and the dependence on the control station. For these reasons, ROVs are mainly used in the commercial sector, offshore, resource extraction, underwater cable, oceanography, Military uses are currently limited to mine detection and especially mine hunting. Semi-automatic control. Control is provided by an autopilot on board the system, which follows a defined set of predefined or programmed rules and executes predefined sequences fully or partially automatically. The system acts within the rules given to it and does not exceed them. The term autonomous has also become established for these systems. Partially autonomous control is when, for example, the vehicle navigates autonomously, without operator intervention, and requests direct feedback from the controller either at certain weapons time intervals or when certain incidents or situations occur. This can be done by surfacing and establishing a radio link. The operator can then, for example, decide on the further procedure of the vehicle or release active agents. This procedure is called man-on-the-loop. In contrast to remotely operated underwater vehicles, ROVs, automatic diving robots work autonomously, meaning independently of the carrier's ship and without a cable connection. Today, automatic underwater vehicles, AUV, are built that can reach water depths of up to 6,000 meters. AUVs require little technical and logistical support during the course of the mission. They can operate in regions where no man submersible, or ROV can penetrate, for example in ice environments. Depending on the degree of automation, these vehicles are able to navigate independently and carry out their mission. They orient themselves by means of inertial navigation systems and or update their position at certain time intervals by surfacing and comparing position data using GPS. Other navigation methods include comparison with the Doppler Velocity Log, DVL, orientation by means of previously mapped underwater features, or by data comparison with position markers deployed in the water at short notice. Due to their free mobility, automated diving robots are more maneuverable and subject only to their own energy storage system in terms of range and operating radius, which means that there are hardly any limits to their range of use. Depending on the programming automation or autonomy level, which requires its own artificial intelligence at the highest implementation, the reaction possibilities to unforeseen situations are limited or excluded. A communication with the mission partners, which is necessary for the execution of the mission or for the fulfillment of the mission goals, is not possible.
the decision maker can only be reached in an ascended state, or with a long time delay, or over a limited distance. Autonomous Systems The autonomous system is an enhancement of independent action by an automatic system. It is able to analyze, evaluate, and judge its environment and its situation independently and finally even to make its own decisions which have not been predefined by a corresponding automatic control beforehand. These decisions are not ratified by a human operator. This is called man out of the loop. Ideally, this ability to make autonomous decisions could solve navigation problems and challenges especially in the field of unmanned underwater vehicles. From a technical point of view, autonomy would also mean that the vehicle is able to carry out repairs and energy supply independently in order to continue or extend the mission. At present, vehicles designated as autonomous are merely programmed in detail. Outside of this programming, they are not capable of independent problem solving. For autonomous problem solving, which also requires the ability to think and act creatively, systems must have an artificial intelligence that is capable of learning. So far, it has not been possible to develop such an artificial intelligence. When applied to UUVs, artificial intelligence is by no means only relevant for functions that are directly executed by hardware, such as an autonomously executed evasive maneuver to avoid a collision due to a sensor-detected object directly ahead, or a watercraft crossing its own course. Instead, it can also be fundamental for numerous actions and reactions further processed, initially or solely by software. Autonomy of a UUV achieved by artificial intelligence would bring new solutions to the problems arising from the lack of signal transmissibility in water. In addition, it would be possible to operate several UUVs in parallel from one control center, since the workload would be less than for a vehicle that is completely dependent on external control. In this context, Iran recently announced that it is deploying UUVs with artificial intelligence in which a mother UUV commands 30 other UUVs and is replaced by another UUV when hit. Therefore, a swarm of UVs capable of communicating underwater and equipped with artificial intelligence to carry out specific missions, such as conducting an underwater attack, is currently operational in the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Navy, giving Iran a huge advantage over its enemies on many levels. Estimates as to whether and when substantial autonomy of unmanned systems will be achieved are considered difficult and hypothetical. A report by the U.S. Defense Science Board on the status and prospects for autonomy U.S. Armed Forces Systems concludes that autonomous capabilities are available at the time only for narrowly defined missions and relatively static environments relying heavily on pre-programmed plans and decision routines and having difficulty responding to unforeseen events' broader mission profiles. Accordingly, situational awareness is identified as a critical development need. The U.S. Navy identifies the following maritime capabilities that would benefit significantly from the use of unmanned systems, reconnaissance and surveillance, mine hunting, anti-submarine warfare, inspection and identification, oceanography, communications and navigation networking, payload delivery, and time-critical strike. Autonomy is critical to most of these mission profiles. Currently, UUVs would only be capable of autonomously performing a mission. The measurement and reconnaissance data collected in the process must be read out for later processing after the vehicle returns and is recovered. A capability for potential real-time evaluation, on the other hand, would place very complementary requirements on autonomy for context-dependent decision-making. For example, if a UUV has collected particularly relevant reconnaissance results during a mission lasting several days, the immediate dissemination of which is crucial for the mission decision, the UUV would have to be able to make a decision in real time. Thanks for watching and see you in the second part.